Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Javier Alonso Mora, and I will be talking about um, motion planning among decision-making agents. Thank you very much for the invite for the workshop. It is a great pleasure to, to be there. I'm sorry I cannot be in person. I had some difficulties with my flights. So for today, uh, I'm going to start with a brief introduction, followed by uh, describing two challenges that we have in motion planning. One is uh, how to deal with uncertainty, and the second one is how to uh, account or model the interaction with other traffic participants. If you have any questions for me, uh, you can look for me uh, during the conference or send me an email and we will uh, find a time to meet. So we are familiar already with many of the pilots that are happening already for self-driving cars in highways and also urban environments. In this talk and in our work, we are focused uh, on those very complex urban environments like the one you see here on the right. This is a picture from Delft in the Netherlands where the vehicle will have to account for the very complex uh, uh, interactions and uncertainty that arises from those interactions with the environment and other traffic participants. So you're probably all familiar with uh, AVs, autonomous vehicles that are in an environment shared with other agents. They take some observations from their sensors with those, they can make predictions of what will happen in the future, how will other traffic participants move, that then are used within the motion planner to compute the safe steering and acceleration inputs for our vehicle. There are many ways to do motion planning. Uh, below you have a, a couple uh, survey papers explaining them. The one we are going to use here is trajectory optimization. In particular, receiving horizon trajectory optimization or model predictive control MPC in short, where we have a model of the robot and uh, a cost function that is uh, computed for discrete time steps in the future from the current time until the time horizon capital N. Then for every time step, this cost function can be the de deviation with respect to a reference. It can also have other terms. We minimize uh, this cost function uh, subject to the constraints for the vehicle model and the collision avoidance constraints using numerical optimization. We then apply the first optimal input to our system and we uh, keep repeating many times per second. Now this uh, framework MPC works very well. Uh, you can so, uh, use it and solve it with existing uh, solvers like ACAD or Forces Pro. And what you see in this video is our self-driving car in Delft avoiding a pedestrian that was not paying attention. So it works uh, quite well, uh, right? And many other groups are also using MPC for this and many other applications. The reasons why it works well is because it's a very flexible and, and powerful framework. You can encode multiple objectives in the cost function. You can encode the vehicle dynamics and obstacle prediction models, and you have explicit constraints that you can then uh, have explicit safety warranties. So this is really nice for AVs. However, it also has some limitations. It's a deterministic formulation. Uh, so that brings us to the first challenge, that of uncertainty. And uh, we didn't encode so far the interaction with other agents, which brings us to the second challenge, that of interaction. So imagine that your car, uh, your AV is driving in a city like Delft, uh, like this one here. It needs to understand the intentions of other traffic participants, pedestrians, bikers, cars, vans, it needs to make multimodal predictions of, of what will happen in the future. It needs to be able to read subtle social cues and implicitly communicate its own actions. If the car accelerates, it's likely that the pedestrian will stop. If the car uh, uh, decelerates, it's likely that the pedestrian will pass in front, right? So there is a level of interaction between the AV and the traffic participants. And then our vehicle needs to execute this safe motion in real time. And all this needs to happen in a split seconds. Now let's get started with the first challenge, that of modeling uncertainty. Uncertainty can arise both from the trajectory that we plan for our vehicle, as well as for the environment. So what will the other agents do? And uh, we can start with the same formulation, uh, the, like the MPC, the original MPC formulation that I explained before, where we have a cost function discretized from the current time step K0 until the horizon capital N and the, the constraints for the dynamics and so on. Here, the important ones are the ones for the probabilistic collision avoidance, where instead of saying that the robot needs to be in a safe state, that it needs to uh, avoid the collision, what we now say is that the probability of being in a safe state 
needs to be greater or equal than one minus epsilon in every time step, where epsilon is the probability threshold that you can choose to be more or less aggressive, more or less conservative. If the prediction model, if the uncertainty that we have is a Gaussian distribution, then this is relatively simple to solve. We can reformulate the chance constraints from a probability, so a probabilistic constraint uh, where we say the probability of the uh, safe set needs to be uh, greater or equal than one minus epsilon to a deterministic constraint that is expressed as the function of the mean and the variance of our variables. In this case, the state so the of the vehicle and the other traffic participants and their mean and their variance of these random variables. What we uh, first do is we linearize the collision avoidance constraints uh, to make the problem tractable. And instead of writing our uh, probabilistic uh, uh, constraint that you see here written, what we do is we reformulate it using the error function of the normal distribution of the Gaussian distribution. And this is uh, an equation that you can then use. This one is deterministic. And here what appears is the mean and the variance of all of our variables. And now we have gone from a probabilistic constraint that we don't really know how to solve to a deterministic constraint that we can use within our uh, uh, with our standard solvers for MPC. Now, in many cases, we will also have non-Gaussian probability distributions. For example, if the pedestrian can uh, has a multimodal prediction that it can go right or left or accelerate or in front or behind or stop or pass, then we need to account for this non-Gaussian uncertainty. What we can do is to sample from a probability distribution. So that's how we convert the probabilistic problem into a set of samples from where each sample represents a possible future that can happen. This is called a scenario-based MPC uh, because we are creating multiple scenarios where every scenario is one sample from the probability distribution. And we go from this original chance constraint problem where uh, the pedestrian motion follows some random variable that is non-Gaussian or Gaussian. Uh, we first linearize again. So we linearize our constraints, collision avoidance constraints to uh, render the problem tractable. Then we take samples. We take samples from this probability distribution. Each sample, it's a potential position where the agent would, might be, where the pedestrian might be in the future. And uh, we formulate this scenario program where now instead of the original probability constraint, what we have is S, so capital S, uh, deterministic constraints, where S is the number of samples that we have drawn from the probability distribution. And here you see that we have enlarged. Uh, this could be many, many samples. So this could be many, many constraints, right? So this could get, in principle, it could get very large. So what we do next is we compute the support of those samples. And this is what we call pruning of scenarios. So we only take the most relevant scenarios that matter. In this uh, illustration here, you see that if we take the blue ones, then everything that is behind, so all the uh, red dots that are behind, they are not needed because they are already behind the linear constraints that we put for the blue ones. So this is what is called the support. And this is the problem that we will solve. We went from the probabilistic uh, uh, problem with chance constraints to an scenario program where we have one deterministic constraint for each sample that we take from the probability distribution. Not for all of them, but only for the support samples, so a subset of them that are the ones that matter. And we can solve this one efficiently with the standard solvers. Here you see uh, one uh, video from our work. So here in black is our vehicle, and in uh, blue is the plan that we are computing it every time instance. Here there is incoming traffic uh, and, and also others that are moving in the same direction. And this could be pedestrians moving in the same uh, environment as the AV. And uh, you see that it's able to navigate, avoiding uh, the incoming traffic. Uh, in red, you see the predictions that we are making uh, for the other traffic participants. And the nice thing of this method is that we go from our original probabilistic problem but to an approximated problem with the scenario that uh, can give us safety warranties. So the safety is certified. So we certify that the probability of collision is below epsilon, so the threshold that we set, with one minus beta uh, confidence. That this relates to the number of samples that you take. So the more samples that you take, the, the higher your confidence will be, but then the slower it is to compute the, and solve the problem. 
And uh, by the way, if, if if we have also now we are also applying this in a real vehicle. If you are interested in seeing that, look for me during the conference. I'll be happy to to show you some videos and also discuss with you. Now the method, the scenario-based MPC, works very well for arbitrary uh, probability distributions, but it also has some limitations, some caveats. For instance, the chance constraints were defined per time step, and we need to sample trajectories. Uh, to have more consistency. So that's something we are working on now. So sampling trajectories to have more consistency uh, throughout the horizon of the planner. Also, is probability of collision enough? Probably not. Uh, I will argue that we should consider risk and the risk can be modeled as the probability of collision times the severity of the crash. This has been done in the literature. So this is something we are also working on. And then there is the question of how do we choose this epsilon? Uh, that is not entirely clear how to choose epsilon to, because if you make a, a very small epsilon, then your vehicle will be safe, but very conservative. So you want to have a good trade-off between safety and performance. And what we also observe is that the method is overly conservative. So for this is one example run, and here you see the, the probability of collision, so the risk of uh, the trajectory in every time step. And we had set a, a probability of collision of 5%, so 0 0.05. And you can observe that it always stay uh, significantly below that threshold, so like half or less. So it's overly conservative due to the simplifications that we have made, so linearization and taking samples, etc. So then we thought, can we do it better? Can we get closer of that threshold to have better performance? And the answer is yes. So we can do that by planning multiple trajectories in parallel with different upper bounds. So we uh, compute, well, we solve one scenario problem with the original epsilon prime that we have set. And then in parallel, we solve multiple of these scenario programs with an epsilon j that is higher than that in uh, epsilon prime that we want. In principle, those could be uh, unsafe, right? We, we don't have a warranty for them a priori, uh, but we have seen that our method is quite conservative. So then what we do is we then uh, do a risk assessment as, after we compute the trajectory for each of these plans, we do a risk assessment of all of them uh, uh, to see which ones are still satisfying a posteriori this epsilon prime that the risk is below uh, epsilon prime. And then we choose the, the, the least conservative plan for which the risk is still below this threshold that we have set. And here you have to remember that one of these parallel programs is with the original epsilon prime. So in the worst case, we will just take the original one. So we can always guarantee this. Now this, uh, we have uh, applied it in, in both with real robots and in simulation and, and have seen that it, it is a type of approach with multiple plans in parallel performs very well. So here we did it, we wanted to have a plan that is uh, warranty safety up to 5%, so 0 0.05. And what we run is, did is to run three parallel plans, one with 0 0.05, 0 0.1, and 0 0.2. And we observe that uh, our approach is capable of switching between them to always satisfy the 5%, so being safe, uh, but uh, much better performance than the original one at 0 0.05. And that brings me to the second challenge, so that of modeling interaction. So the interaction that comes from the actions of the robot and how they affect the actions of others. So this is this red arrow that you see here. So the, the pie, the, the plan, the policy that our autonomous vehicle computes has an effect on what the other agents do. And this needs to be modeled in our motion planner and in our belief updates that are then going to be coupled. And this is very challenging uh, to do, especially in real time. So formally, what we do is we formulate this uh, problem. Now it becomes a couple optimization problem, a joint optimization problem, where uh, the cost function j in every time step depends both on the state and the inputs for our vehicle here with the superscript i, as well as on the state and inputs for all the other vehicles here with the superscript minus i. And here we are then explicitly encoding the dependency between the two types of plans, the, the ones for our vehicle and the ones for all other traffic participants. Uh, this can be solved, for example, to this is a dynamic game, uh, the way that it is formulated, and this can be solved to a Nash equilibria of the problem. 
Now, in, in, in what happens here is that there are many different ways or philosophies to solve this uh, or to address this interaction problem. Here I have listed five of them. Uh, so from the first one, that is uh, all, all vehicles communicate their trajectories to coordinate, for example, with uh, distributed MPC to the robots. Uh, uh, to, we use uh, uh, motion predictions for the other agents that implicitly encode the interaction. And those predictions can be in, uh, learned, for example, with reinforcement learning from data in simulation, that's the option two, or to imitate what a human will have done in that uh, 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 case. And that is the third option. Then the fourth option is to really model and solve this uh, uh, joint uh, optimization. So this couple optimization between all the agents, and this becomes a complex, a dynamic game with joint rewards for all the agents. And the fifth option that I will uh, explain a bit more in detail today is to learn a cost function. So learn a, a cost function that implicitly models this interaction with the other traffic participants. And this one, it came the, from observing. So this is what we call interactive MPC. And it came from observing that the human drivers communicate their intentions and they negotiate with other traffic participants adjusting both the time headway to other vehicles and the time and the distance to them. And we thought that this could be translated into a velocity reference that the car then can use to navigate. So here, then the first step was we trained a neural network uh, with deep reinforcement learning to output a preferred velocity. So continuously, this DRL agent that we train in simulation outputs a preferred velocity for our vehicle based on the current observations. And that the reference velocity is then used within MPC, within a resident horizon trajectory optimization planner to compute a safe motion because we have explicit constraints in the MPC for collision avoidance, minimizing the deviation with respect to that uh, reference velocity that you can think of it like intuition, intuition for our vehicle on how to move in that complex environment. Uh, this DRL agent was trained in simulation. We use uh, the probabilistic ID model, so intelligent driver model, uh, adjusting different weights for uh, or cooperative uh, values for the other agents from being cooperative to non-cooperative. And then we ran many simulations with uh, our reinforcement learning to train this agent with soft actor critic optimization. Um, now I would like to show you one example. So this is our AV and for more details, I will be presenting this paper tomorrow afternoon, so uh, on when on Monday in the conference. So there, I will uh, you you can get much more details on how the method works. So what you see here is our AV in yellow that needs to merge into a lane uh, crowded with many many vehicles. For the other vehicles, if they are red with uh, low numbers, those are non-cooperative, and green with high numbers, they are cooperative agents. And our policy, it's our DRL agent is able to infer which agent is likely to be cooperative and then negotiate to open a gap and merge. And this is still less safe uh, thanks to the MPC constraints. And that's what, and then we can see that in the comparison that we have done to both the MPC and deep reinforcement learning, achieving good performance with better safety warranties. So in summary, today I've talked about motion planning among decision-making agents. That's where we want to get, the, the challenge we want to solve, and in particular, two sub-challenges to address that uh, goal. The first one was uh, uncertainty, so how to model uncertainty, and we did that with chance constraints and formulating an scenario MPC. And the second one is how to model the interaction with other traffic participants, and there are many different approaches that I briefly mentioned. And the one that we have used uh, is, or one that I presented today, was to learn a guidance policy that then is used within an MPC framework to have the best of both worlds. Learn a complex cost function that is hard to define by hand and execute uh, safely with an MPC with explicit constraints. If you have uh, questions for me, I'll be happy to discuss uh, more with you. You can find me uh, tomorrow in the journal presentation oral three. Uh, that I will be sharing, so we can talk right after that uh, in the way to the posters, or you can send me an email and we will find another time to meet. So enjoy the rest of the workshop and uh, see you around the conference. Uh, have a nice, uh, very nice uh, rest of the day.